Welcome everyone to another battle analysis. Once more, we're on steps. And this time in our trusty T10 Soviet Tier 9 heavy tank. With it being buffed and renamed from ISA to T10, this tank is more like a Tier 9.5 heavier. As requested, there are now Russian subtitles for the Russian viewers. Today, we're running with BPX and Alyo from the Fame Clan. Grinding tanks for experience can be a bit of a pain and platooning can alleviate some of that. During the countdown we discuss a plan of attack. Immediately our platoon goes to the east flank of the map and this flank is very important to take control over. It's easier to decap our base from and it has a lot of safe spots to fall back upon. Without any artillery piece in the game we don't have to deal with that mechanic. We get a nice snapshot into the Centurion action 10 and move way too aggressively, taking two shots in return and this was too costly. Here we'll see this again in the replay. The main goal is to advance and not to deal damage or take any. Therefore it is advised to take the lower route and just push up. Now we're moving up, but trying to get that return shot in to make our 1 for 2 trade even with that 2 for 2. Odds are against us, but a very lucky heat shell travels right where we aimed and even high rolled. That was dirty and lucky. Don't try this at home. With Alio on the high ground, we're going to explore the lower part to see if we can get some easy shots on the Centurion Action 10. We don't know what's behind him, but the 50 TP decided to push and if the Centurion is alone, he's going to die right here, right now. With 3 tanks and 440 Alpha each, this 1500 HP Centurion is going to be sent to the garage. We switch to our friendly AP that provided us his replay and he finishes off the injured Centurion. With the Centurion dead, it's time to push our advantage. Clear away this T44, which is the easiest target. Oh, Ayo got him. That's always nice to have competent platoon mates with you. That hold on 50 TP will be a tough nut to crack too though. Better focus our attention to another tank. We reposition and Ayo gets shot for 765 damage. Which was the grill as we communicated over TeamSpeak. Holy macaroni! That shot from the Tiger was really really nice. Straight into our upper plate. At T49 in the distance! Instantly leaving the shell and slapping him for 379. He should have crossed more in the back to avoid our shell. The tortoise has a weak spot that shows itself before he can fire at us, so we aim carefully and slap him for 432 in his third thingy. You will notice that I can spot the tortoise's silhouette through the ground, and this means that the models and the textures aren't lined up correctly. Truly one of the more annoying things in the game. Let's see what's going on in the battlefield. The middle is open and the western flank is going to fall. How can we predict this? Simply look at the tanks, where they are, and it's generally safe to say that the side with more tanks will just rush and overpower the enemy. Our goal here is to defend the railroad crossing. Best thing would be to get the STRV on A3 and a spotter in the middle. Combined with lots of firepower from the back, it's an easy hold. Unfortunately, we don't have this luxury in randoms, because it would mean coordinating more than 5 guys. Since we're noticing that the western flank is going to fall, we're already positioning for the enemy advancing towards our base. Notice the chat. The T69 notifies the team that the enemy Eurus is in the corner. That flank of theirs has a lot of protection and this makes our place stronger than it was with the added information. We're just a little bit late getting back into the action because the enemy E75 made it past without us being able to shoot it. Sometimes it is what it is. The enemy VK pushes up and gets slapped twice by me and Ayo. What he should have done was aim towards our positions. There's no way an enemy will shoot him from C1, so therefore aim for D6 and make your weak spot smaller. Here we're making a mistake, we're pushing up too far. There was no need to push up, and luckily the angle on my tracks was enough to deter the shell from the E75. Here, we can shoot the VK again. But hey, see? He turned his turret and we bounced. 
This was more his luck than actually knowing what to do. But it works out for him. The enemy is also missing their shots, which is always nice. <laughs> Pushed up a bit too far, taking that unnecessarily E75 shot. Because the enemy is pushing up the north and they can shoot at us without being spotted, it would be a better decision to help the friendlies in the south. And there we go! A full HP Scorpius has to take down our ML1. The ML S1 and I all put a shell into the Scorp and it goes down. And this is important, because if we wouldn't have aimed our shot, it might have went to the moon. The enemy Judas thinks the same and picks over. Unfortunately, our shell dips low and only damages the tracks. These shots are just pure RNG and nothing you can do about it. Handle it the best we can. The Judas only barely manages to get away safely. Half a second and he would have been toast. We're aiming for the grill of 15. He's focusing on our friendlies or whatever he looks at and he doesn't look at us. Our Betjet AP finishes the Judas. While we get slapped for 199 by the enemy tortoise. Without gun depression, we have to retreat. Currently, it's better to try and get this tortoise out of the game, so reload heat and bring that gun to bear. Hmm. We can't seem to spot the enemy. Oh, there he is. That simple bush was in the way. And before he can aim, we already got our shot in the air. We're at 5k damage and ready for some more. Ran out of heat. All the plebs in the comment section are gonna be like, oh, Why did you load so much heat in the first place? You're only unicum because of heat spam! I'm here to show you how to successfully play the endgame. We're moving up trying to see where the enemy grill and 50 TP went to. We spot the 50 TP and snapshot straight into the lower part of his tank. Easy. The AP spots the Gridler and can only get a snapshot off. Here we have a great example of how to deal with these kind of situations. An enemy can only aim at one position. So it's not really wise to stand behind each other and pick the Gridler in this situation. So what do you do? You go around and make the grill decide if he wants to kill the T10 or the AP. We can go ham and have our friendly AP shoot while the Gorilla isn't looking. And here we see it from a different perspective. Excellent timing by our teammate ensures that we don't die a horrible death. With the south part of the flank secured, it's time to help Aya out with all those one-shots near him. Or not. Taking out enemy tank is the single most important thing in the game. Even a tank on one HP can still spot and can still shoot, with the VK down, we're left with a 2 versus 4. Letting our teammate know that we will be shooting HC. Just hitting that 113 casually with the HC splashes him to death. And now it's a 2 versus 3. With a little peek, we're looking to see if the enemy advances any further or if they gave up after their comrade has fallen. Time to retreat from that flank and use our superior view range to our advantage. The alarm is ringing and one enemy player is on the cap. Since I know that my ally is Dutch, I communicate to him that we should go through the middle. Communication and a relaxed mind is the key to victory here. We're going as fast as we can towards our base because the enemy might start to cap with more than one and then we would be too late to decap. Our ally lets us know that he's reloaded and ready for the fight. Let's pause for a second here and think of a battle plan. With me moving through the middle, the enemy can easily be on A3 and kill us, but we take the risk of them not being there. To help win this match, the AP needs to take C1 through D2, C2, because then he spots the cap. And with a spotted enemy on a cap, that makes it way easier for us to decap with HE. And when the enemy is on A3, they will be focusing on C1 where our AP would be. Well, okay. Meaning that we can get an easy decap off and won't die while the AP has enough HP to take one shot from any enemy. 
We continue to move towards the cap, angling our tank a bit against any tank that might be on A3, but we don't get spotted. Hmm. We knock over this post, and that's very, very bad. It's, it's like a burglar ringing the bell of a house he intends to rob. We didn't get spotted at A3, so the enemy must be on the cap, and could be on B7 and C5. We don't know exactly where. Assuming the enemy has the east flank covered, the enemy capper would look in this direction. Makes sense, right? That would mean only Stevie Wonder would miss that post being knocked over. And our AP spots the enemy capper and has a bad shot on him. We can move up and slap this E75 with AG. Minimum exposure time, maximum damage, the side of the tank is the most vulnerable. With the cap secured, it's time to find the remaining enemies. All yo is a great idea, and that the batch at AP should go B1 and move undetected and fast into A5 to spot the enemy. Instead, the AP is waiting for the ambush that might follow from D5 by the enemy. Which is exactly what you would expect, some sort of retaliation. I've sent out invites for a party, but the 430 and IS-3 aren't showing up. Also, some banter from my part, because the AP is moving around like a headless chicken. Enough time wasted. Rather lose than draw. This is the mentality I hope every World of Tank player eventually has. Moving up is dangerous, but with only 2 minutes and 50 seconds on the clock, there's not a lot of time to chase around the entire map. We spot the enemy 430 and we're in a super bad position. He's hold down and we're out in the open. But look at our ammo! He peeks! But we don't have the depression! And luckily he misses his shot and whoa! There's the enemy IS-3 as soon as the siren goes off. The IS-3 shoots AG as we can hear from the explosion behind us. The 430 peaks and we send him back to the garage. For some reason the IS-3 decides to peek for us and with the most insane snapshot we put a juicy 385 shell into his unangled upper frontal plate. With the IS-3 being one shot it's time to press the attack. He's scared and we're using that to our advantage. He misses his shot again and unfortunately we miss ours too. While we were fighting the IS-3 head on, we can see that the AP has completed his flanking maneuver. The AP misses his first shot, but puts the following two nicely into the back of the IS-3 for the game winning kill. And at the end we are congratulated by the friendly T-69 who had a nice view of the entire end game. Thank you buddy. This was one of those games where teamwork and staying calm came out victorious along with a healthy splash of luck. A victory. We received an ace tanker, confederate, high caliber, tank sniper in a soviet tank, comrade, and a top gun, nearly getting a red lease. With almost 6k damage and 7 kills we received a whopping 1481 base XP. Almost all our shots hit and penned with a lot of heat fired. But with battle payments up, we were still able to make a profit off of this game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And you might notice that the battle is from an older patch and the uploads have been rather scarce on my YouTube. This is because I started working as an editor. When I get better and more efficient at editing, I can see more time freeing up and then being able to do my own videos more frequently again. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and what I think is the most important, motivation for the things that matter to you.